on President Obama's dramatic announcement of a large-scale deal to slash taxes across the board for investors, individuals, and for businesses. So we ask, is an extension of these Bush tax cuts and unemployment benefits a good deal for the economy? And is it a change in the Democratic Party, namely President Obama? Here now we have Democratic policy analyst and syndicated radio host Mark Levine and syndicated columnist and syndicated radio talk show host Ben Ferguson. Mark Levine, it's good to see you on a night <laughs> when President Obama <laughs> definitely listened to the message of the elections. So I'll just throw you a softball. What do you think of it? Uh, what do I think of it? I hope the House Democrats reject it. Look, there are some good points in it. I'm glad the Obama tax cuts got extended. Remember, for the vast majority of Americans, they're much larger than the Bush tax cuts. We all know that the money going to the millionaires, to the 0.1% of Americans that make more than a million a year, won't help the economy at all, will just vastly increase the deficit, and will eventually probably come out of poor people, middle class people, Social Security checks. That makes no sense at all. But, you know, Obama, in order to help the vast majority of Americans, had to pay off the Republicans. The Republicans were holding the economy hostage. <laughs> and so they had they, they paid them off. I, I disagree. I, I'm very disappointed in President Obama. I'm starting to think that I should have voted for Hillary Clinton. Uh, ben. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a great night. Uh, I mean, you, you, you hear him talk about this. The part you, you heard the president say tonight, yes, he trashed wealthy people. The fact of the matter is, he had no other option but to do this if he wants to try to save the economy. I think he realized that his liberal ideas were not working. The last election said to him it's not working, and he knew that if he didn't extend these tax cuts that the economy was going to continue to go in the negative direction and unemployment rates were going to go up. I think the president finally realized what other liberal Democrats still don't get for some reason is that it's better to have Americans keep their money, no matter how much you make, than the government spend it and it not work out. Mark Levine, look, if it's good for most Americans, you yourself acknowledge that, it's good for the majority of Americans. If it's good for the economy, as our investor experts suggested, as did Ben Ferguson, why isn't it therefore a good thing for President Obama and the Democratic Party? Isn't it time the Democrats try to at least look like they're in favor of economic growth instead of just the usual redistributionism? Larry, as long as you and Ben and every single Republican in Congress promises to never complain about the debt again, to never complain about deficits again, to never complain about spending again, then we can just, you know, print all the money in the world. The difference is Democrats are fiscal conservatives. They believe in pay as you go. Where Republicans get in power, they spend out the wazoo, and all their money goes to rich people. And here's the dirty little secret of the economy. <laughs> I've said this again and again and again. Massively rich people do not hire anyone when you make them a bit richer. I don't know whether Larry, whether you earn a million a year. I'm not going to ask you your income, but if you get a hundred thousand more, who are you going to hire? Mark, let me ask you this: How many poor people out there that you know right now hire people? I'll tell you something, Ben. The you don't know. It doesn't work that way. And you know. You know it. I know it. It doesn't work that way. The fact of the matter is, is wealthy. Hold on, let me Mark. Can I ask your question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. Small businesses, 98% of them, make under 250 grand a year. They hire people when they make more money. But I got to tell you something. You got a huge business, and you got no more demand for that business. Ben, how many people are you going to hire for jobs you don't need? Right. I, if demand's I hire, not up, why I would hire, you hire somebody? Let me. Let me. I, I, first of all, I'm a small business owner. I hire several people that work for me every year, and I can tell you this much. And it you're doesn't hire matter. More let me you finish. Let money? me finish. Let me finish. Whether I'm making a hundred thousand, hundred twenty-five thousand, or hundred fifty thousand, or seventy thousand, if my income goes up, I expand my businesses, which means more part-time hours and more full-time hours. And the fact of the matter is, nobody that's on welfare has ever has ever hired anybody to my knowledge. And the fact of the matter is this president today is saying that it's acceptable to be unemployed for three years and we don't know how we're gonna pay for those benefits tells me he still doesn't understand the economy and how it actually works. Mark now, Levine, ben, I, yeah. I just can't resist myself, I have to ask you, do you find it at least partially ironic that the centerpiece now of President Obama and the Democratic Party's economic growth plan, that being this deal that was announced today, across the board tax cuts for everybody, is in effect almost identical to the economic policy of George W. Bush, the late, great George W. Bush. Well, what do you make of that? 
I make of it that the economy is not going to do as well. We all know that the Bill Clinton tax rates created 22 million jobs. The Bush tax rates barely created a million. At the end of the day, we're in this mess. Remember why we're in this mess. Why do we have a $4 trillion deficit as, as high as the eye can see? Because George Bush took all of our national wealth and gave it to rich people. Now they're extending that. I understand that because you know, the Republicans held the economy hostage. But at the end of the day, it makes us more and more like Mexico. It makes us more and more like a country we have very few extremely rich people and the rest of middle class people struggling. And I got to tell you, I don't believe taking more Larry, money from the poor, but there are, give it to the rich. But helps. there are payroll taxes. There's unemployment extensions. I support there's those. Bi there's business investment uh, incentives. I'm I mean, okay with that, too. Ben Ferguson, do you think the Democratic Party, just because it's George Bush's policies, I mean, actually, it's they, bigger they than... They hate it. They despise I mean, it because it has the name George Bush on it. All right, I so mean, let, let's just call it the 2003 tax How cut would you plan. pay for it, Ben? All right, let, let's go there. Ben uh, Ferguson, and talk to me about, after all, the Tea Party movement, I asked this question of John Howard earlier, the Tea Party movement worries about the deficits, worries about the size of government. Now, nobody in either party wants pay-as-you-go rules to govern these tax cuts because the economy is so weak. But how does this play out down the road, Ben, regarding fiscal prudence? Look, I think, I think the Republicans that are going to Washington now know that they can't be like the same Republicans that were there in 2004, 2005, and 2006. They know they're going to have to make cuts. The question is, is this president going to lead on cuts as well? I mean, you and I, the reality is with the economy the way it is now, you gotta ha you can't have taxes go up. Do we have to pay for this in the future? Absolutely. Do we need to start figuring that out right now? Yes. And the people that are going to watch it now, I think, know this. They ran on this. They said, look, yeah, but ben, we're you going still to have to get a specific. How would you pay for it? How would I pay for it? Well, yeah. first of all, I'd stop all the entitlements. Second of all, I would make so it unacceptable. So Let me finish. Let me finish. I would make it unacceptable to be unemployed for three years in this country and have the government give you a check to do that. That's unacceptable behavior that creates laziness in this country. It doesn't take three years to find a job. Now, so Ben's plan is end pensions, create food lines, get people out of their I homes. Said. Here's the it's secret that said. costs the economy. If people can't afford to buy toys for their kids at Christmas, if Bob Cratchit can't get any money from Uncle Scrooge and all the money goes to him, there will be no Christmas. Mark, Mark, this compromise, won't be Mark, this compromise tonight, Mark, let me ask you this. How long is long enough to find a job in America today? How many years of unemployment is the point where we say no more from your opinion? At the end of the day, it's because people can afford toys. So what I said. I asked you how many years to make toys. How you many years it take to find a job in America? It's not their fault but that there are no jobs. I'm not blaming the them. I'm saying it's all when it's called laziness. There's no consumer demand. Hang on and one second. There's no second. consumer demand because all the money's going to the rich. Mark Levine, let me ask you this: If the economy grows in 2011 and maybe 2012 at four percent, some of our investment experts think that that is possible. Four percent economic growth. Four is better than two. Does sure. not President Obama benefit? Does not the Democratic Party benefit? The same way that when John F. Kennedy lowered tax rates, that was his proposal, LBJ got it through, the economy roared, and the Democrats feasted at least for six or eight years politically. In other words, why can't you overcome? If it's a growth package, why isn't it good for Democrats as well as the country? Larry, I support economic growth. I do hope economic growth grows to 4%. I think the thing that, that the Republicans need to do is, since we now know they agree with Dick Cheney, deficits don't matter, let's just stop talking about deficits and the <laughs> national debt. Keep printing out the money. Sure, a whole ton of it goes to millionaires. I would hope more of it would go to ordinary middle-class Americans. But until Republicans like Ben will say how they're going to pay for it, and all Ben has mentioned is cutting Social Security. He wants to throw I those didn't, poor, I didn't mention those rich Social Security. Sure, you I said didn't... entitlements. What's an entitlement, Ben? Name uh, one. I, again, I go, it, obviously, you to understand we have too What's many people and let me finish there are too many people in this country right now including this president that think it's okay to not go ahead not one time in this presidency have i seen him go out and challenge the american people that's time for them to stand right. up and take care of themselves not one Fellas, time has i gotta he done get that. out i gotta get out uh we're gonna have you both back and ben ferguson is gonna submit a 65 page detailed deficit reduction plan i want to see that, that. that should be and fun mark levine will critique it we appreciate both of you mark and ben thanks very much for this evening up next on cut love